back to the channel guys today we have a super cool effect i'm going to be talking about mixing some simple tracking with some transitions to create this smooth movement that you see here in this asap rocky paxon collab video that dropped a couple of weeks ago i made a part one tutorial on this talking all about scrapbook effects so if you'd like to check that out you can check out the link below but today we're going to talk all about using after effects to create cool movement motion blur movement like this and let me go frame by frame just to show you here's shot one and you can see how that's kind of pasted into this exact um, little shape here in the chandelier and it pulls away I do want to say I apologize if I sound a little bit nasally. Um, I was actually sick for the past few days once I got home from vacation. That's why it took so long for this video to get out. But nonetheless, the show must go on. Let's hop into Adobe After Effects. I'm actually going to set up a little dynamic link here um, in Premiere. If you guys would like to follow along, uh, the footage I'm using here is royalty free from pexels.com. I'll have a link down below if you'd like to download uh, the exact ones that I used. I do want to say that results will vary based on your footage. So what I mean by that is if you look at this example in the ASAP Rocky video, if I play this full speed, this is a very fast swivel out from this chandelier shot. So if you have something like this, where I do have a little bit of a pullback in the shot, but it's not as fast, it's going to vary when it comes to pulling through that transition and matching with the speed. So keep that in mind. You wanna look for shots that are sort of matching the direction you're trying to transition. So if you're trying to zoom out of something, then it's best to use a shot that's moving backwards where the camera is moving backwards like this. So again, the footage you use matters. It'll change the results, but the steps for creating the transitions stays the same. So as always, if you're new here, consider subscribing, slap a like on the video if you do enjoy it. It helps me a huge amount with the YouTube algorithm and growing the channel. And comment down below what you'd like to see next. So let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and just select my footage here, right click on it and click replace with After Effects composition to bring that into After Effects. And of course, if you guys only have After Effects, you can just start with in After Effects. Let's go through and just find the parts that we'd like to transition into. So we have a better understanding of how this is gonna work, how the layers are gonna stack up. So we're gonna try and create this little zoom out transition where this scene is pasted onto the face mask of this lady's astronaut helmet here. So I'm gonna make a little cut before her hand covers the mask. Mask, so right about here. So to do that, I'm gonna click Control Shift D. So this clip here is the area I'd like to use for my transition. I'm gonna right click and rename that to Helmet Transition. I'm going to grab this Helmet Transition clip. I'm going to drag the layer above all of these other layers. So it's at the very top here. Now that this clip is at the top, I'm just going to take it and drag it so that it's over top of our bike layer. So something like this. And then I can grab the excess and just kind of make that line up. So now I'm gonna create a simple mask in the area where I'd like my bike layer to be showing. This is our helmet face shield here. And with your own footage, you can choose any little shape that's easy to track. I'm gonna go up to the top left and grab my pen tool. And I'm just going to select my helmet transition layer and start drawing a mask around the shield. All right, so connect your mask. And right now it's probably defaulted on add. So it's gonna look something weird like this. Let's select that layer and we're gonna click M to show our mask options. And let's just set the mask to none for now. So everything should go back to normal. You can see your mask here. We're gonna go ahead and with that mask option still up, right click on it and we're going to click track mask. Also make sure you're at the beginning of your clip whenever you do that. Once you've clicked that, this little tracker window should be highlighted. So the default method should be position scale rotation. That's fine, go ahead and click play. So After Effects is going to attempt to track this shape and try and keep it solid. You'll see how it's kind of messing up a tiny bit at the bottom there. We can fix that with simple little keyframes. So once you've done that, go back over to your mask options. We're gonna change that from none to subtract. And now you can see our footage that is beneath this layer starting to show through in only the mask. So let's start cleaning this up a little bit. You see we have this rough edge. You see it's sort of bleeding through here. So first off, what I like to do is open up my mask options and just add a little bit of a feather. So for feather, I like maybe going like seven pixels. I think that's fine. You can also mess with your mask expansion. So you can just bump that a tiny bit. I like to keyframe my mask expansion, drag to where it's starting to mess up here and just bump that up. So with our keyframe added, um, covering up the main face mask area. All right guys, so once you have everything at this point where you can see it in the helmet, let's start setting up our transition. So all you need to do here is select your transition layer here. We're gonna go ahead and just open up our transform options over there on the left. So just click that triangle. And you want to take your anchor point and your scale. So first we're gonna scale up the layer. 
And then we can use our anchor point to kind of center that. So we'll do something like this. And you want to scale it up until it's no longer on the screen. So like that. So once you've scaled up your footage, let's go ahead and create the actual transition. So what we're going to do is right click in this gray space. We're going to go to new and we're going to create a camera and then we'll just click OK. And then to make it so that our layers will react to this camera, we're going to click toggle switches and modes until you're seeing this 3D cube switch. You see I've already turned them on. Make sure you check on the 3D layer switch for each of your layers. So we're going to take this camera here and I'm just going to shorten the length so that it starts right where our helmet transition starts. So like that. And then let's open up the transform options for that camera. And then at the starting position or, or wherever you'd like the transition to start, you can just click and drag to activate all those keyframes. You see we have them put in there. And now if you click C on your keyboard, you're going to see these little controls pop up. These are your camera controls. So this one kind of swivels the entire camera like that. We don't need that one. Uh, this one is like a full rotation. The only one you really need is uh, this zoom. So this one here and the pan. So this one lets you pan left and right. So we're going to drag a couple of frames. We're going to switch to our zoom control for our camera and we're just going to drag out and try and make your footage centered. So something like that. So if I play through, here's what that looks like. You guys can adjust these keyframes here. So this is a little bit too fast. You can take those keyframes, just move them, stretch them out a little bit. Now this zoom out will be a little bit more slow. You can make it the full duration of the clip if you want. So you have it starting at this footage and zooming out to our next shot. Now the only issue here is you see all this sort of transparent edge. If you have this turned off, it might just be black. So what we need to do is select the bike layer or whatever your starting layer is. We need to click S and we just need to scale it up to fit the size here and just pan through, make sure there's no edges showing. It's better to use high resolution footage here um, so that there's not a lot of quality loss. And the good thing about scaling it up like this, if we start at the beginning, you'll see the scale is already set up perfectly. So we don't have to apply those settings to different clips. Now, if we keep scrolling here, you're going to see um, our excess footage, the ones that we saved earlier. Um, it's kind of messing up with the scale. So let's just delete that. And we're just going to take the helmet transition layer and just extend it at this point. And this is where we'd like to end the transition. So I'm just going to click Control Shift D. And then we don't need any of this crazy mask. So I'll click M and delete the mask on this excess part. And we'll just rename this to normal. So now it should go from this shot here, zooms out and pace into the helmet of our astronaut and then snaps away and goes just into normal footage. And we can add some little opacity stuff so it fades away. We'll get there at the end. Now we're not showing you just how to do zoom outs. I wanna show you how to do this rotating transition like you saw in the ASAP Rocky video. So let's just quickly analyze that transition one more time. So we'll play it full speed. See, it's kind of, it's hard to explain like a half rotate like this. It's not a full rotation. It's really just that half swivel. So we're gonna try and create that little half swivel and we're gonna add in all this motion blur as well. So to do that, let's go back to our camera here. What you wanna do is you wanna take your Z rotation here. And if we just kind of crank that value, you can see how that turns. So if you guys want a good idea of which way you're gonna be swiveling, just kind of play around with your Z rotation. So I kind of wanna do a little half swivel. So I'll take this and just drag it to the right. So it ends up like this. If we were to do a full rotation, say for example, put this at one X, so full rotation, you're going to see how much spinning it really is. And you guys could do that if you want. But in the original video, it's not a full rotation. It's just that half swivel. I'm going to go to the end here and just crank this to the right. So we're just going to do a plus 180 in the Z. So it looks like this. Now you may be asking here if we do that, if we do that half swivel, everything's going to be upside down. So let's make it so that this can turn upside down, but our original stays normal. So that may sound confusing, but it's very easy. All we need to do to fix this is just go to our effects and presets over here, and you want to search for the flip effect. So let's take flip. We're going to place that on our transition, my helmet transition layer. And you'll see here how our bike footage is sort of messed up with the placement. So I'm just gonna grab the bike layer at the very bottom, the layer that's inside my mask, and just sort of adjust that. 
may need to add a bit more scale. So here's what we have. We have our bike footage and then we swivel in our helmet. So everything's still looking a bit sloppy. You're going to notice all these transparent edges because we're doing these rotations, etc. We're still going to have to scale a little bit to fit. So also make sure once we get to the normal part here, that isn't uh, upside down. You guys can just drag flip on there again to fix that. There you go. So we have two steps left. Step number one, we need to make this transition look a little bit more smooth. And step number two, we need to fix these transparent edges that are showing here. So let's start with number one, making it look more smooth. To add realism to any movement, I like to add motion blur. So let's quickly add motion blur to this scene. All you need to do is go back to the toggle switches and modes button at the bottom here. Make sure you're checking that like when we turn on the 3D layers. This time we're going to turn on the motion blur switch. So check motion blur on for all of these layers. Now instantly, you guys will see a little bit of a difference. If I just check that on and off, you can see. If you want a lot more motion blur, make those faster. You guys are gonna get some crazy blur like you see there. You can also always go up to composition, composition settings. And under this advanced tab here, you can take the shutter angle and just crank that up or down. If you put that up, you're gonna have a lot more motion blur. So make sure you take advantage of that. So we've added some motion blur here, but it's still kind of hard to tell the final results because of all the transparent edges. So to quickly fix that, what I like to do is just select all the layers here, right click and then pre-compose them. And we're just gonna name this final scaling. We can move all attributes into the new comp and click okay. And then I'll just scroll to the area where this is sort of messing up. I'll just click S and I'll scale that up. So a lot of scaling, again, that's why I really recommend you use high resolution footage. You guys can also create some keyframes here so that by the time it gets to the end, you can just click reset and it'll sort of scale back to normal like that. That's why, again, the movement of the second clip is important because it kind of matches that scale as the camera moves out. So we press play, scales back to normal. Everything looks good, hides it a little bit better. Now you see how this kind of abruptly um, cuts away. Let's just double click back into that pre comp. And then near the end here, let's grab the bike layer. We're going to click T to show opacity. And we're just going to go ahead and create a quick little keyframe near the end. Then drag near the end and set that to zero. So that will fade out like that. But if we do that, you'll see we kind of have this hole where the footage used to be. So let's place the normal footage behind that to kind of cover it up. We're going to select the normal layer that I kind of made at this cut and just click Control D to duplicate it. Let's drag that layer to the very bottom and just extend it underneath. That way it'll fade out just to our normal footage. So easy as that. We can go back to our finish comp here, the scaling comp to see what that looks like. And easy as that, guys. Again, this is really something you can change up a lot. Um, something as easy as just taking the camera and um, speeding up the keyframes can really change everything up. If the whole half rotation is a little bit too complicated with all the scaling to fix, you guys could always just do a simple zoom. You really have full control over what you can do with the footage. So if you guys did enjoy this simple, smooth transition, slap a like on the video. It really does mean a lot to me. Comment below what you'd like to see next. I'm gonna get into some beginner 3D stuff. So we're gonna hop into Blender, which you can download for free. And we're gonna talk about integrating some easy Blender stuff with After Effects. So hope you're excited for that. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.